Well, welcome to Namur here in Belgium for this FIM 250cc World Motocross Championship. Originally scheduled to run in Poland, but moved here to run alongside the 500s at this truly famous Monaco of motocross. There you are, Namur, just to the uh, south of Brussels. Beautiful area, steeped in history, as you would know, those of you out there that are motocross fans. There's the track. Let's go on board with Joel Smets on the KTM as he gives us a rider's view. it is but qualifying of course is what it's all about the top 30 riders have to go against the clock to get a place on the grid for Claudio Federici things were looking very good at this stage yeah it's good but uh, it's difficult for me in this track oh, for, for all riders because uh, this first time uh, race 250 but uh, it's very nice, the, the circuit, because uh, it's different uh, in other circuits. The time of 2.51.55, he finished in fifth place. But for Josh Coppins on the Corona Suzuki, had he been here before? No, I've never ridden here before, but uh, it's a track that I've, I've dreamed of riding on. You know, all the, all the legends have ridden on this track, and uh, it's just a track that I dream of riding on. I finished third overall at a GP, I finished second overall, so there's only one place to come. And, uh, Maybe it won't be this weekend, but I'm for sure trying the hardest and the team's right behind me, so uh, I'm hoping it'll, it'll come soon. So fourth place for Coppins then with a time of 2.51, it was good, but for Bolle, things weren't looking as rosy as normal. He only managed to finish in third position with a time of 2.51.53. So the Frenchman, the current world champion, still a lot to do. But in second position and a courageous ride with a time of 2.50, this was Pip Beera. I walked the track yesterday, first time in my life, and I was pretty motivated to do good on this track. I think that's a kind of a perfect track for me, and uh, first and second practice was already difficult to make that speed, what the Maria sets uh, every, every practice, but now in qualifying I'm only half a second off uh, and second. I love it to come here now, and uh, I know this is the famous 500 track, so uh, sorry for the 500 guys that they need to have us here also but uh, I want to put my name on that winner list from Namur for sure. So for Bora, it was second with a time of 2.50.95, but the man they all had to catch, the former 500 rider, Frenchman Yves de Marier. Uh, oui, yes, he says, I'm sure I made a very good time at the beginning of qualifying, and it's sure that after it, it will be difficult to improve. So I hope that I will stay first and top of qualifying. I know the circuit here because I've ridden before in the 500s. The design of the track was a little bit different to when I was here last, but uh, much the same, things should be good for tomorrow. So for Pichon, after the crash of last week in Grobendonk, how was he feeling? The pain is not so bad, just on the, on the back, it hurts a little bit, but uh, the worst is uh, that I have no, no strength on, on, uh, on the shoulder. I can't hold the bike very good, make it very difficult to hold, and. Uh, my neck also hurts. I'm, I get tired really quick. It was a really scary crash for me, and uh, I'm, I'm happy with what I have. I mean, it's not such a big injury. It's, a, it's really bad right now to have such a such an injury like this because uh, it's at the bad time, at the, at the bad moment. But it's the minimum I can get. So um, on one hand, I'm not happy because it's making it difficult to get the title now. But on the other hand. Uh, uh, I still can ride, so that's the most important thing. Tomorrow it's just about uh, getting two good starts and, uh, and try to, uh, to ride tough and get some maximum points as I get. I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be impossible to, to get the podium but, or top five, but uh, if I can get around 10, uh, like I'm right now in the, in the, in the colonel, it's still going to be some points and uh, I hope those points are going to help me for the end of the championship. Tenth place that he qualified, needed to do more, but for the top three on the day it was Paul Cooper. Number 18 was Kvarna. Last week, you uh, probably are still celebrating a little from last week's result, third on the podium. That was good. 
Yeah, very happy. I mean, the, everyone's happy, the team's happy and stuff. Um, but yeah, the problem is you can't celebrate too long because this week's another one. So we want to try and do that again, you know, a few more times before the end of the year. It's a very different track. It's not, it's, I mean, it's not what any of us are used to, I don't think. Um, and it is definitely tough to do one, one fast lap. I'm struggling a little bit myself, but yeah, it's got to maybe give it one more go. I'm not sure. 2.54 was his time, 12th place, but for top Belgium rider, this was Danny Favors. I rode here the last five years, the 500. Always make top uh, 10 results, a few top five results, and, and I hope my experience uh, makes a good race tomorrow. A heavy Belgium uh, race fan who is here is supporting for me, uh, so that's giving me more power. He finally qualified in ninth place, so as the locals celebrated their local man success here at Namur, just look at this picturesque view at night time. We'll be back after the break with the first of the 250 heats. Don't go away. Here we are at Namur then, and what a Grand Prix this is. The 250s have never been here before, it's a, normally a 500 circuit. And as you can see, the fans have flocked to this historic motocross circuit. Sit here, sided here on the uh, citadel of Namur. And what an atmosphere. The Brits were here, of course, to cheer on Gordon Crockard. And the rest of the Brit lads, well, I'm sure they are some pit Barrier fans. The old Smets, of course, we've got a 500 round of the Grand Prix here as well. And maybe next year we'll have a triple head here. Now that's what to do with an air horn. Blow yourself up. I call that an inflated ego. So, as the fans settled down, and there were many, many thousands of them here at this superb, historic circuit of the Moor, waiting for the first race to come onto the line, the riders lined up. There's the starting list. Demare then with Barre, Bolle, Coppins, Frederici, Kovalan, and Mikhail Maschio, the second of the Kawasaki Winfield runners, in seventh place. So we look forward now to Kavlacek in eighth. Then it was Danny Thabers, the local Belgian man. Mikhail Pigeon only managing tenth. Bevelain and Cooper Bellametti and Serge Gudetti in 14th. Then it was uh, Zani and Crockard only managing 16th place. Ivan and a great result for Mark Hucklebridge there in 18th. Ilias and Carlson and Stuart Flockard 21st. Romans, Dorsch, Sepelak, Paget Atkins, Gronruns and Midali. Sebastian Midali there in 28th with Daniil and Blistard, the Spaniards there in the final third in place. So there is young Mark Hucklebridge on the MJ Church Kawasaki and it's great to see this guy doing so well. Things are just going better and better Grand Prix after Grand Prix for the lad from uh, Marshfield in Wiltshire in England. So here we go, the 250 heat one about to kick off. The gate has dropped. Here to go. Who's going to make that all-important hole shot? Looking good at the moment. Everybody safely through that first set of turns. We'll wait to see, I think it's Crockard. The Irishman, once again, despite qualifying in 16, has done the deed, has got the bike off the gate before anybody else, and I'm sure that's Crockard, it is. That looks like Bellamati back in second place. We're looking for Bollet, he's amongst that group, but not a good start for him. But yes, indeed, the man from Northern Ireland, the winner last week of the overall Grand Prix in Groben Donk has taken the home shot. Di Mario down there in about fifth place at the moment. As the rest of the field goes through, it is Gordon Crockard on the CAL uh, that's got the lead here. Bellametti number 10 there behind him. Then it's Bollet, then Pigeon, then Di Mario, then Byra. Frederici was in that group as well, and so was Danny Favors. There is Hucklebridge going through 42, but Crockard at the moment. Bollet engaged in a furious tussle here with pole sitter 77 on the three-time Yamaha, Yves de Maurier. 28 years of age now, de Maurier from Marseille in France. The fly, as we best call him in English. So de Maurier now, and uh, Byra and Cro Crockard's on the floor. Gordon Crockard has dropped it. Bellamati goes past him, Josh Coppins number 7 gets alongside him, but at the moment the tussle is now at the front because Bolle has the lead, Demario's going through, 
DiMario who knows this track so well from riding here last year in the 500 series on that uh, Husqvarna, he knows every rut and every tree and he's demonstrating his superior knowledge because he's put the world champion Frederick Vollet on the Palmo Honda back to second place but Byra second in qualifying, the pit ball is on his way about to snap at the heels of the Frenchman in front of him so DiMario it is that has it but look at Byra on the Winfield Kawasaki. Byra looking for a way through on the inside. Bolle tries to hold him out. It's corner to corner. Handlebar to handlebar racing here at Namur. What a fantastic place to come and watch motocross. There's about 30 or 40,000 people that have turned out from all over the world. A lot of Brits, a lot of Belgians, a lot of French, a lot of Germans. Everybody's here, but look at that for a corker of a scrap. So Byra hangs on to it. And there's Pigeon. He's outside the top 10 at the moment. I think about 11th. So that shoulder obviously playing a little bit of, uh, of a disadvantage to him. He said it was really just a question of uh, staying there. And Bolle's off! Bolle's off! Something, he's either got a problem with the bike, he's, I think he's got it started again. Yeah, Bolle, now with Pichon in the situation that he is at the moment with that shoulder, possibly won't be scoring too many good points. Bolle needs to uh, make good of this. Frederici and Crockard's picked it back up again. He's now on the back door of Claudio Frederici. That's Coppins in front of the New Zealander. Remember, Coppins fourth in qualifying. Gordon Crockard 16th. Frederici fifth in qualifying. So Crockard demonstrating once again that you don't have to be quick for one lap. So DiMario leads. Byra now second. So Byra, he said he wanted to put his name on the trophy here at Namur. Hopefully, maybe next year, we'll have a triple header here. Let's hope so, because it really is a fantastic circuit. And anybody that knows motocross, this is the trip that you have to make. It's the Monaco of motocross. It's what 24-hour racing is to Le Mans. Motocross here at Namur is, without a doubt, an atmosphere, well, unequal to any other track around the world. So Crockard having a stormer at the moment. And uh, look at Byra. Byra trying to find a way through. And he's quickest at the moment. The German pit buyer looking to displace the Frenchman. And bear in mind that uh, De Maria hasn't taken a Grand Prix win yet this year. And he looks as if he may be on course to snatch this one. But I don't think the German will agree with that. He wants to get through and take this. There is the local man, Danny Thabers, the Belgian rider on the KTM. Top qualifier, the Millennium KTM. Sixth place. He knows his track. He's ridden here before in 500s. So he should do well. And Pigeon, well, I think it's all over for him. I don't think he'll score any points here today. He's heading back to the paddock and probably back to uh, the attentions of the doctor. That shoulder that he injured last week at Grobendong has just given way. Valuable points being lost here for the championship leader. And Bolle at the moment out as well. So the damage a little bit uh, restricted for him. But this man, number 77, Heath de Maurier, the fly on course, I think, to take the win here in Heat 1. Byer is still second. Crockard is up to third. Well, you can't keep the Croc star down. Coppins, Frederici, Thabers, Cooper, Kovalainen, Maschio, Kadlicek, Peter Ivan and Mark Hucklebridge. Twelfth place for the young man. Privateer, as this man is, number 13, riding the CAS Elf Honda. Team manager, Harry Ainsworth. Gordon from uh, Northern Ireland. He is basically British, but you would say he was Irish. <laughs> So Crockard third, well, after leading the race and dropping it, dropped back to about seventh place, made a courageous charge back through to get to third. So Crockard, the winner last week in Grobendonk, but De Marier heads towards the chequered flag, looks over his shoulder, there's no one there, least of all Byra. He's going to take his first Grand Prix win of this season, deservedly so. So Yves De Marier, 20 points. Byra chases him home in second place. Crockard will come home in third. Well, what a race that was. Chopping and changing corner to corner. This indeed is a test of strength, this circuit. So as we wait for the official results to come up there. Look at it. It's at, steeped in history, this place. DiMario then confirmed. Byra Crocker, Coppins, Frederici, Paul Cooper. Tremendous ride up there into sixth place. So we'll be back after this short break to bring you the highlights of Heat 2 here at Namur. here in Belgium for our second heat from the world 250cc motocross championship La Chalet du Monument oh yeah that's what it's all about they all flock down here to the cafe on the side of the track the Brits every nationality this place is a legend in motocross and you can see why there you are 
thousands of people have flocked in to watch the race in here. It's a very sunny day. We've been very lucky on weather. So, can the man on the 77 bike, the Frenchman, there he is on the inside. Heat de Maurier do it again here in heat two. We're about to find out as the gate drops. Who's going to get that all important hole shot? That first corner. And that oh, looks like Cooper. Paul Cooper on the number 80. Mudderax Husqvarna looks to have got an absolute flyer. I think that's uh, De Maurier on the inside. And Crockard third again. Gordon Crockard. Well, that bike just gets out of the gate so fast. Crockard, Byra behind him. But uh, De Maurier, I think, back there in second place as they come down into the wooded section. Remember, they start off in the Citadel area. Then they drop into the natural wooded uh, terrain which is where you are now there's Frederici 69 there's Danny Thaver's good result in race one for him and Bolle not a good start for the Frenchman remember DNF race one no points Pigeon went out with no points as well but it is Paul Cooper the South African leading the Frenchman Demare winner of week one Maschio was in there as well with um, Josh Coffins behind him as the rest of the Peter Ivan just flashing through the picture and Demare is going for it Demare goes into the lead he did this in race one. It took him no time at all to displace Bolle down before Bolle went out. And apparently it was an engine failure of some kind. But look at uh, Byra. Byra going for second to take it off third, I should say, to take it from Crockard. Crockard relegated back a place. But Crockard fights back. He'll have none of that. The Irishman, True Grit is his name. Crockstar. He has none of that from the senior racer, the German who's been racing for many more years in Grand Prix than Crockard has. Crockard, the young upstart from Ireland, says, oh no, I'm having that place back. So Paris sits behind him on that Winfield Kawasaki. His teammate, Mikhail Maschi on number six, Winfield Kawasaki, sits behind those. And now Crockard is closing in on uh, fellow Brit, so to speak. Paul Cooper going for a pass on the inside. They've collided. Well, Cooper gets the worst of that one. I think you could call that a classical block pass. Crockard used it to full effect. And I think Cooper may have been uh, wiser to shut the throttle there. But no, he, he piled it on. You see, Crockard goes for the inside. Cooper goes from the outside. Crockard has the line going up to the hill. Leaves Cooper absolutely nowhere to go. But, uh, well, for a trip to Mother Earth, basically. So Crockard, happy now in that position, I think. He's third. So a good result from this race. Could put him on the podium yet again, as it did last week. But he was on the top step last week at Grobadonk. He won't make the top step this week, that's for sure. Right, but here's Josh Coppins, the New Zealander, with Claudio Frederici on the Yamaha there, right behind him, seventh and sixth. So Coppins hangs on to it. Frederici wants to get through. The tenacious young Italian. So we've got Di Maria leading. Crockard is second now. Byra is third. Bolle is still going. But look at this for a scrap. Between these two, Frederici, sixth place now. Frederici got. Frederici looks over his shoulder at Coppins as if to say, OK, I would like to come past you here. Would you move over and give me some space? And uh, no, Josh Coppins just pulls across in front of him. So Frederici ducks the bike in, turns quickly on the access and just goes through. So here now is Frederici closing on Maschio in fifth place. So Claudio has really got the bit between his teeth. Would like to move up the order at the end of this race, I feel sure. So here he comes, Maschio defending the number six Winfield Kawasaki rider, the Frenchman, still coming back from that early season injury. But Maschio looking for a way to hold off the man behind him and he hasn't done it because Frederici goes through. So Kopp in seventh, Cooper's up into eighth now with Thabers behind him. Cooper making a comeback after that clash with Crockard. And look at Bolle with Byra. Bolle, no points from the, the first race, needs to score well here. If he's to claw back the disadvantage in the series lead against Pigeon, who has retired, hasn't gone into this race at all. And he does, goes past the German, nice and neatly on the inside. No clash of bikes, so Bolle goes up a place. Byra goes down one. So these two here, another good scrap then, because Danny Thavers has got fellow Belgium number 21, Peter Ivan, right behind him. And these, the two Belgium lads, the two top Belgium lads in this race. But Cooper is up to second, closed on Demare, but it was enough because Demare about to come round to take his second win and his first double win of the season. Holy smoke, the Frenchman riding out of his skin. What a result that was. Demare, I remember, rode in the 500s last year, finished fourth. He decided to come back to the 250s. There's the LM girls, lovely as always. So there's the classification.
Di Mario then. Krakow, great second place. Bolle Bara, Ferrici, Cooper up to six. Coffin to seventh. Great recovery there by Paul Cooper. Uh, winning uh, Namur with two hits. Uh, it's fantastic. Oui, c'est sûr que c'est bien. Uh, J'espérais faire un grand résultat aujourd'hui et ben, ça s'est avéré juste. Hein. Après les essais d'hier, uh, je me devais de faire un, un très bon résultat. Et c'est sûr que gagner deux manches ici, c'est fantastique. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yesterday I did a good result, but the goal was today to do a very, very good race, and uh, for sure winning two races here, it's fantastic. If now you are back in the championship, you are back winning, uh, we can expect good results in the next GPs. Oui, c'est sûr que j'espère beaucoup de cette fin de saison pour uh, essayer d'accrocher au moins la cinquième place. Et ça passe par de grands résultats comme aujourd'hui. Et les trois courses qui restent sont, je pense, favorables pour mon style de pilotage. Et je vais essayer de faire la même chose. Yeah, I'm expecting a top five results in the championship, so we have three more, three more uh, races to go. And all these tracks are, um, are good for me, so uh, I, I hope I can have uh, other victories this year. Thank you, Yves. Thank you. So a rejuvenated Yves de Maurier here, taking the over result from Gordon Crockard, second there, Byron Federici Coppins and Cooper, six. Danny Thabers, the local rider, finishing up seventh place overall with 17 points. Bolle then back in eighth, then Peter Ivan, Maschio, Kovalainen, Vevelainen, Elison and Kadlicek, the Czech rider, six points, 14th place. He's uh, chogging along quite nicely, that lad. Certainly one to be reckoned with for next year. So look at the pictures here. Isn't this a gorgeous setting? You don't have to come to the moor just to see motocross. You can come here to look around as a tourist. Great. Pichon then, 337 points. Bolle behind him now, 333. It's so close. Bora. Josh Coppin, Ferrici, Crocard and Di Maurier now 7th with 210. We've got another three rounds left to go in the championship. The next one, of course, is in Luxembourg. It's a triple header next week, so maybe Bolle can take the lead in the series. So there we've got Paul Cooper down in 8th, then it's Maschio, Peter Ivan, Danny Thabers 11th, Bellametti, Colin Dugmore and Marco Kovalainen. 14th place for the Finn with just 65 points, but still doing very well. Nevertheless. So Namor certainly as always very memorable for the 250 Grand Prix, memorable for everybody that has been here today, this weekend from Friday right through to Sunday. We'll look at the classifications for the uh, manufacturers, Suzuki still have it from Honda but only just from Kawasaki, Yamaha, Husqvarna and KTM down there in sixth place with only 152 points. But remember they've only got a few riders in the 250 series. So as Yves de Maurier shakes the hand of Gordon Crockard, and the German Pit Vera, those are your top three. Di Maria then, Krokard, a great second overall from Pit Vera the German in third. You couldn't ask for anything better here in the Moor in Belgium. It's an experience that you must enjoy and let's hope we can come back next year to enjoy it once again. So as we leave you with the French national anthem from here in the Moor, we look forward to seeing you next week in Luxembourg for more great motocross racing. <laughs>